there yarn lovers, it's Gary and I'm coming to you from my living room here in Vancouver, Canada. So welcome, welcome, welcome. Today's Thursday, December the 10th, 2020 and this is video number 86. So yeah, you get me twice this week. This is video two. I recorded yesterday and uploaded a, a podcast and this one I'm jumping in just to talk about some intentions. Uh, on what I'm planning to do with my yarn dyeing experience in the next couple of days and also a little bit of a dress up on items that I created in 2019-2020 and the purpose of the show and tell of the past makes is to just recap uh, my I guess learns for the for the year of 2019 to 2020 and share with you. So I won't be going over too much of the patterns if I've followed a pattern. I won't be going over too much of the information on what type, style of yarn that I use, but more so talking about the, the learns along the way and highlighting in a rapid kind of formation uh, the garments and items, accessories that I had knitted and crocheted up for that year. Uh, yeah, a little bit of an exploration and it's going to be quite fast paced. I always also want to catch you up on some finished works that I have done over the course of the week and talk about those as well. Uh, if you're new to this channel and you're happening across it for the very first time, hi, my name's Gary. I'm the host of Urban Yarn. Welcome. Uh, I've set up this channel to talk about all of my yarn journey. So that's knit, crochet, a little bit of dabbling in hand dyeing of yarn as well as acquisitions where I purchase my yarn from and tools of my craft so either online or in store I review some price points as well and uh, yeah so if that kind of stuff interests you please stick around think about uh, giving me a thumbs up and joining us here amongst our fiber friends by clicking on the subscribe button down below let's jump into the podcast I'm gonna start with the finish makes I have two of them over the course of the week and I'll tell you a little bit about uh, the pattern that I created and what I intend to do with bringing it out so this is my uh, it's called the bush tracker beanie and it is a knit pattern or created from I guess my tests and examples that I uh, try out with the herringbone and rib stitch and I have uh, intentions of trying the pattern like writing it up and I'm gonna get some testers to uh, try it out give me some feedback and advice because I haven't written patterns before and a number of you are keen on trying it out so I am gonna endeavor into a new realm for me in my journey and I will try and knit this pattern uh, sorry I will try and write this pattern up and yeah so this is a version that I knitted up and it's gonna go to my letter carrier so we sparked up a conversation a couple days ago so uh, she was interested in getting a beanie made up and she requested it to be a messy bun beanie so it's got like a hole in the top here for her hair to uh, I guess if she's got a bun or if her ponytail wants to be drawn through there she can uh, wear this this uh, messy bun beanie with her outfit or her uniform whether she uses it for work or not I'm not too sure but it has that lovely herringbone stitch here and it uses the rib one by one ribbing all the way up until it closes almost closes at the top so the diameter there is probably enough to fit your hand in to retrieve your hair uh, so I think that will be a nice comfortable fit for her it's meant to fit a little bit baggier so it's not a skull cap it's a it's a beanie with a little bit of room to wriggle around in there and I love the colors the awesome awesome color uh, combination I held two together and what I used was the style craft uh, it's a self striping variegated yarn called Merlot and I held together with it the remnants left over of my loops and threads colors and it is a variegated yarn uh, that transitions between the black into the silvery kind of white here into a gray so it's called coffee bean no it's actually called uh, I think it's called coffee and cream that's right it's called coffee and cream 
uh, the colorway. So that again was Loops and Threads Colors, and I don't think that they produce that anymore. It was a yarn that was only in Vancouver, uh, only in Canada uh, for a while, and I believe it was only released in the Canadian market uh, at Michael's. So uh, yeah, that was the last bit of the of the that colorway that I used for this hat. And you may have seen this one a few times around on other videos. Here is another version of the beanie and it is again it's called the bush trucker beanie and in the same colorway as my friend on YouTube here Crystal at Bagger Day uh, I had a request for making it up and I've now ran out of the yarn uh, that I used in this color combination so uh, it uses the premier uh, red uh, mule wood Mule Woods and the colorway is called Redwood and the cookie yarn in the colorway I believe it's called what is it called mustard and it is from Hobie uh, so those two are worked up in this arrangement here again the herringbone is this stitch here and the rib stitch uh, is the rest of the hat there so that's going off to the recipient uh, who had purchased this hat. So I hope that it works out well for the present. She's gifting it to a family member and I, it turned out really, really nice. I'm gonna go to the post office today and get that ship, shipped out. So now I'm gonna talk about the, uh, I guess let's start with the makes because I'm getting quite hot here in my little cardigan and my beanie. So I am gonna talk about those first. And these were created in 2019-2020. Uh, this is uh, a cardigan that I knitted up and it holds two yarns together. It is a raglan style, in, uh, worked from the bottom up, raglan style cardigan and it has a little bit of a collar in a rib stitch. Really nice and I held together two yarns. One was the Lorena Colorful in a charcoal grey to white Mull, as well as uh, I believe it was Hobium's Baby Utopia in it, also uh, a black and white kind of mild textured yarn. Uh, this one here was, I think this was uh, with the cardigan, it was my first uh, try at mulling and holding two yarns together, so that was my learn for this piece and this garment here. And it was my first cardi, so I kind of had to uh, learn how to use uh, the back and forth on a cir large circular set of needles because it was an all uh, encompassing panel that did the front panels as well as the back panels all together and knitted up at once. And yeah, so that was my learn for this one. So I can take it off now, it's quite warm. <laughs> And my hat that I'm wearing here is actually one that I did for hubby. Uh, so I am just wearing it for this podcast to show you what I had done with this one. was also another colour experiment. And uh, I rolled up the rim for this one and I did a 2 by 2 ribbing. Uh, did the colour work for the clothes as well. And it's slightly a little bit of a... I don't know, it's not like a skull cap, it's a little bit puckery at the top, which I like. It gives a bit of style to it as well. Uh, nice choice of colours here, it was Lime Brands, I believe it was called Heartland in the colourway Glacier Bay, and a Hobium Yarn, the Gazelle in a Lime Green colourway as well. Uh, so yeah, I'll just show you the... <laughs> just got out of the shower, so I've got a little bit of damp hair here. That's the close up there. It's uh, got a four. It's got a four point close off, so the clusters of decrease are fourfold, and it gives you that kind of close off. And that's the little scene there of the trees. I followed a pattern to this. I can't quite remember what the name. I think it was called a walk in the woods. Uh, so, yeah, really nice pattern there. Very simple tree motifs. Really, really like that. So, <laughs> excuse the wet hair. Uh, 
let's get jump, jump into some of the other makes of 2019 and 2020. All of these are also shawls and scarves that I missed out on showcasing a few uh, videos back. I did ones on another tub that I cracked open, a plastic tub of uh, shawls and scarves. So this is some more of them. Uh, you may have recall this one. It was my festive dragon chevron scarf. And this was the first one that I did in a kind of a stash buster test piece that I was uh, training myself to count stitches and uh, do the ridge work so that it was completely reversible. And I put some fringe on it. Sock weight, sport weight, combination yarns, and very, very bouncy. And I'll just wear it for you so you can see how it drapes. So, yeah. The uh, idea of the, the fringe, it, it's quite um, a heavy sitting garment uh, and it flows really, really nicely because of the nature of the materials in the, in the yarn itself. Uh, caused it to be quite a weighty yarn uh, and I really like that because it's going to stay put, it's not going to fly off. It has a bit of grip to it as well when it sits heavy uh, so it's going to cling to uh, your clothing or if you want to wear it on a jacket it's not going to slip off unless your jacket is made of a slippery vinyl or a slippery type of fabric then it uh, it may actually slip but I really like it here on this uh, cotton shirt that I'm wearing and it's gonna stay put again it has the fringe and it has the reverse ridging I'll leave the link down below to this tutorial of how I create uh, the uh, the festive dragon chevron scarf so if you're interested in trying it out uh yeah it's a two row repeat uh yeah so i also did the tutorial for th this is what what i completed in that tutorial that you uh that um that you'll see if you link to that tutorial and this one is in again the lorena colorful uh yarn from Hobium and it's in a different colorway. I believe it's got the greens, yellows in this colorway choice of the Lorena Colorful and I paired it with a Knit Picks over dyed that I did, an over dyed job. So this is how it turned out. It was a little thinner than the last one. This one uses a uh, count of 40, I, I believe it's 43 stitches, 42 stitches, whereas the other one was uh, count of 60 61 stitches so it's quite a long one and this one can be worn uh, double over because I believe it's around seven seven to nine feet long around there some somewhere in that in that vicinity and it also has the fringe on it as well it's also a nice kind of drapey cotton it's a cotton acrylic uh, blend choice of, of yarn. The other one that I have was also inspired by uh, pr another another crochet pattern that I'd seen. I believe it's called the Alina Chevron, the Alina Wrap or the Alina Chevron Wrap. So I utilize the idea behind the Chevron Wrap and she has one chevron in her pattern, but I kind of recreated it to do two chevrons. And this is also in the Knit Picks Over Dye Cotton yarn. And I over dyed a couple of batches of, of this in, it's in the Color Mist series, and I over dyed it with an Aztec Gold in a variant of different tones and then I added in some scarlet red a little further down the way here which uh, also has the it came out more of a rose a rose pink and the Aztec gold as well kind of combination so I'll just put this on this one I learned uh, how to do the chevron in decreasing and increasing on each row with uh, how to crochet and uh, what is it called? Crochet two together so that you're sort of decreasing to get the angle on the bias. 
and then uh, increasing by adding another few stitches to uh, kind of like get the opposite or, or opposing angle. Uh, yeah, so really like how this one turned out as well. It's uh, lovely, rich and bright. I can see this being more of a more of a piece that's used perhaps in uh, warmer w weather where, uh, yeah, because it has lots of eyelet to let air come through. Uh, so I think this would be a good one for a springtime wear or even a summer wear, if you're, depending on what kind of part of the world that you live in. Like that color. The other one that I did was a fiber spider uh, tutorial. I believe the designer is uh, a different designer, but Fiber Spider did the, the tutorial for this piece, and it's called the Rivulet Shawl. Uh, oh, I'll just show you. It was done in a fingering weight yarn. I believe it was fingering weight. Yeah, and it uh, was a swap yarn that I got from Rose, from Rose Likes Crochet. Hi, Rose! And this uh, yarn was a... I'm gonna think Hobby Lobby yarn, it came in a wheel and it gradated from this ultramarine blue all the way to a white in a slow gradation. And I'm not sure what the yarn was called, I can't write, quite recall, but uh, really loved learning how to do this pattern. Uh, again, it uh, helped to know the repeat on this one once uh, I learnt it, it was quite an easier, easier make. I should just back there so that you can see the whole thing and I will try it on for you. Again, not a wintry garment for sure. It is more of a sun protector. So maybe a kind of garment that you would wear in the spring or the summer to shield your sh skin from direct sunlight uh, and the nature of the yarn being and the pattern being holy like it is. Uh, it let, lets enough air come and circulate so that you breathe underneath the piece. So yeah, I really like that. That was a great make. The, I would say one of my favorite makes on crochet for 2019, 2020 was this particular scarf here. And it's called the Stormy Sea Scarf, and I did it in this sport weight yarn that I over dyed and came up with this nice green colorway here. It has a little bit of speckling, a little bit of tonal work through it, uh, but I loved this crochet pattern so much. It's called the uh, Stormy Sea Scarf. Uh, I don't know whether I can locate this pattern again, but if I do recall this particular pattern, I will link it down below because I absolutely loved it. Uh, so yeah, I'll just try it on for you. It is a lighter weight yarn. The repeat in the pattern is uh, you need to have it sit, sitting by you so that you can recall where you are in the pattern because there are 16 row or 18 row repeat. There's quite a number of rows there, but it was the first one that I learned how to do uh, like almost like a fan it's like a fan uh, of the stitch work, so it's like, and it's on a bi on the bias, so it does go on an angle. I really, really enjoyed this one a lot. I loved it. It's one of my favorites. Uh, the next one that I have is a knitted scarf, and I was playing around this one with carrying yarn up the side so that uh, I didn't have to cut and weave in ends, and it came out quite a neat little uh, I guess it, it kind of goes up the side there. So it's really, really neat how it worked out. So every second row of knitting, I changed up the yarn and I moved it up to the next layer. And it was quite a very nice way of transitioning the color. And again, I play around with different weight sizes. So I have a full weight here in this, uh, it's called a chartreuse green, and that's a full weight, and then I paired it with the Joy uh, yarn from Loops and Thread, I believe it's called the uh, Joy yarn, and it is classified, I think, a three weight, so it is a little lighter, and 
This is also the Joy yarn in it. Um, it's a variegated yarn. And I held that double sometimes with another yarn. And then separately uh, in two rows, I, I dropped one yarn and carried it up to the side and only knitted with one of the yarns. So it gives you a little bit of a natural fold where the fabric is a little weaker because it only uses one of the yarns. So you have a little bit of a chance of it folding in an interesting way when you wear it. So I just played around with that uh, awesome striping technique as well as the, the way that it will kind of fold as it bunches up with the weaker part of the, of the fabric where I only hold one of the strands as I knit across. So I like the color combination as well of marling it together. Really, really nice. Very super drapey and just nice texture. I, uh, it was a ribbing uh, style two by two, so on either side. And then we go back to crochet. Uh, here is a little scarf chief that I crocheted up with little eyelets. It was to a pattern uh, XY scarf, it was called by uh, Linda, is it? No, it, by Johanna Lindell. And I just added the, uh, the eyelets myself as a feature for this small uh, project. I didn't do it to the actual length of the pattern. I wanted it to be a little shorter so that it wouldn't drape too far down my body. Uh, so I was just interested in doing, I think the depth of it is maybe around 12 inches and that's as far as I wanted it to drop. And uh, yeah, so nice little number there. Bit of pop of color if you have a jacket over it. It kind of suits this, <laughs> this shirt. A little bit of a Western look to it. I completed another one here. It is a shawl called the Dragon Valley Shawl. This is where I got the idea for my uh, festive dragon chevron scarf. Getting those ridges on uh, the Dragon Valley Shawl was part of the uh, influence and inspiration that I had for making my version of the chevron scarf. This is uh, on the bias and it grows one, one side uh, so, sorry, it increases one side of the triangle and uh, you work it up from one point all the way to the end, which is lovely. Just try this on. This is in the yarn from Red Heart and it's called, it's called, it's a wrap and it's a fine weight, a super fine weight number one. Yeah, super fine weight number one. And the colorway I think is called uh, Hawk, uh, couture. Hawk couture. It's a it's a French word. I'm probably pronouncing that really wrong. My hair is just going crazy today. I, it's just completely dried since the time of uh, me uh, clearing off my phone till to now. So yeah, really like this. It's quite a drapey light number with lots of perforations. So uh, an airy, breathable piece for sure. Uh, the other one that I have that's knitted here is a simple crescent knitted scarf and or wrap it's called and it was on the ball band of one of the uh, Red Heart Super Sa Red Heart Hopscotch bands that I got and uh, this is how it turned out. It's in the colorway in Hopscotch called Kickball really like that how that worked out this one is a, a little bit more uh, dense I want to say dense in the fabric that it made so it's a worsted four weight and uh, it has a very nice I'm gonna say it's kind of a festive colorway approach to the way it uh, worked up and spread the colors throughout uh, yeah it's a really nice number there Super, super soft yarn. I like the hopscotch a lot. Uh, the next one that I have to showcase is the crocheted scarf here that I have. And I use the uh, Premier 
spun colors I can't remember the colorway name of this one but I was learning in this one how to do uh, the decrease increase of a bias and working a panel up this way then turning the work around and working the reverse uh, increase decrease to get the the bias happening uh, in the opposing angle so th what I did with that was I, f I discovered a way of making color work an interesting uh, effect from one panel to the next without having to do too much work uh, along the way of switching out uh, yarns so I worked up one panel turned the work around and then worked up the other panel in, uh, attaching them as I went along the piece so I'll try this one out. It also was combined with another yarn here. So we had the Premier Spun Colors and the other one that I alternated with was a Ferris wheel in, I believe the color was called uh, something butter, like maybe Buttercup was the colorway that I paired it with. And it gives this nice textured, almost like a fabric uh, that you would see in furniture. I really like that corduroy effect that it had and it used the same kind of stitch as the XY scarf where I believe you uh, stitch a row through the back loop and the next row you do through the back loop again and it creates kind of like a small ribbing ripple effect in the fabric when you are uh, to look at it when it's laid flat uh, so that was really really nice the last one that I have to share with you uh, is a piece that I did commemorating our, or celebrating I should say, our Zelda from, hi Zelda, how are you doing Z? Uh, she was celebrating her birthday back in October and I will link her channel down below. Uh, her channel is Zelda NRJ3 or NR3J. Uh, I'll get it right one day Zelda, I'm so sorry, but uh, please go down below uh, to the description box and if you're interested in meeting a lovely effervescent character Zelda is the person for you so this is what I had uh, created and it's to the uh, festive uh, the just feel festive scarf from Kalisha Ryan and I had done something a little different to the pattern. I didn't uh, make it as deep as she has. Uh, hers is like a lovely wrap that she's created, but I wanted to do a scarf. So I narrowed the pattern down to uh, the width being, I believe it's like six inches wide or maybe five inches wide. And I did around 10 feet of it. I busted through a lot of uh, sport weight and three weight yarns, so I always combine my yarns together and This one is 10 feet long, so it's a bit of a beast and you can wrap Oh, I can wrap this around three times and I really like all the different honey colors and butterscotch colors uh, mixed with grays and a slight pink rosy pink so quite a nice number there uh, so that concludes the uh, the makes I'm gonna leave this on because I'm I, I love the colors of this one uh, yeah so that uh, brings us to the intentions for dying up in the kitchen my next round I was in the bedroom uh, doing the winding of my uh, what is that called that winder it's like a swift swift is that the name of it uh, I was swifting up a uh, little little Hanks of 50 uh, grams and this is what I'm going to be using in my experiment to over dye so I've got a couple of hanks here of the Kartopu it is in the Angora natural color uh, collection and this is from Hobium I'm gonna over dye them and get a little bit of a uh, fun pack where they can gradate from one color into the next so tonal values I'm thinking of with this one and I got four of them, see how they go. And I've got another, cause I bought a five pack and I separated two of them into a halves. So I've got 50 gram Hanks here. And if it works up really well, I'll probably get uh, the other couple of balls that I have 
in the pack and I'll do exactly the same thing. I'm just going to see how it takes to a uh, new writ dye that I purchased and it's for acrylic uh, yarn and see whether it takes better. Because I tried it on a beige colour in the same fibre base from Hobium and it didn't really take to my other dyes. It only slightly tinted it a little bit but I think that's because the dye that I was using was more for natural fibres. This has a slight natural fibre in it. It has a 10% amount of wool and 10% uh, mohair. So the parts that I guess dyed with the, uh, the dye that I was using were those animal fibre bases and it didn't, uh, it didn't change anything at all to the acrylic side. So I'm hoping with my new dye from RIT, the acrylic dye, that I can get some results on top of these. Uh, this is the base. It's like an icy blue and it, it's a colour that I don't really have a lot of and it doesn't really suit my complexion. So I'm thinking of uh, maybe making more of an olive green and using the this as a base. So I, I probably will have to start with more of a yellowish uh, tint so that if it does mix with the dye that is already on here, that it will become a green. So I've got those three. Then I have three skeins or hanks that I've hanked up in my Peyton's. And Peyton's has a classic, I think it's called classic wool. It's called Peyton's Classic Wool Worsted. And it's a, a variety of yarn that is 100% wool. And I am gonna over dye these ones because again, the color in this mile, the gray and uh, like a light off, off white, are uh, ones that I don't really wear. So I'm going to be doing some over dyeing of this one as well. And another variety of yarn again that is something that doesn't really suit my uh, palette in my wardrobe is the Just Wool. And this is from Hobium as well. And it is a mixture of recycled wool and acrylic. So I'm thinking the same thing, doing more of the olives uh, into pistachio colors. So more green, yellowish kind of hues. And I might make a fun pack out of that, which uh, different colors of green can go together to make a garment. And I have this Knit Picks one as well, which I'm going to over dye. Again, it is in a color that doesn't really suit or match too many of my stash that I have. Uh, it, um, it needs to have some more oomph in the color added to it. So I'm going to be over dyeing that one. Not too sure what kind of range of color I'm gonna use, but I'm thinking more earth, earthy tones. Uh, maybe doing a mustardy brown. Uh, so yeah, we'll figure something out there. I also have purchased a mystery box of yarn from Crema and uh, I got the blue, baby blue variety of this and I'm, I'm not sure what the content is. So I'm gonna test to see whether I can get both of my acrylic variety of dye that I have as well as my acid dye, which uh, changes the color for animal-based product like wool fibers, uh, and the such uh, in here. If there's cotton in this one, it may, uh, it may result in a heavy washing afterwards to get rid of all of the excess dye that will come out of it. But um, I might try one hank and then if the, the wash up is quick and it proves not to be a cotton, then I will try out the others. But again, I'm gonna make some fun variety pack there of different uh, gradations of color. Uh, so I got quite a number of those hanks that I made up in 50 grams. And lastly, I have two nitpick uh, hanks here that was graciously in a swap with Kit. Hi Kit! And Kit has a YouTube channel as well, I'll link down below. Uh, it is all things crochet and knit with Kit. And she has swapped with me Wool of the Andy sport weight in this bare yarn that I'm going to dye up as well and do some experimenting with. 
Uh, I also have two of these tanks left over, over from a purchase that I made from Dyer Supplier. And this one is a fingering weight yarn. And the package says that it's 75% merino and 25% nylon fingering weight yarn. It's kind of blowing out there. It's a slight off-white and those are ones that I probably hang up into 50s as well and uh, and do a little bit of a fun pack with those too. So that's my intentions and I'm really looking forward to seeing what I can get. I have uh, some fun surprises with them later down the way as well. Uh, so I hope that you'll stick around to find out what happens with some of these fun packs. Uh, yeah, so that concludes me catching you up on my quick sprint down memory lane of 2020, 2019 to 2020 uh, in the shawls and scarves and also my intentions on what I plan to do with my next dye up experiment in the kitchen which I'll probably jump in here in the next couple of days and begin. So with that I bid thee farewell, I hope you're doing well and I hope you have some great plans for the weekend, some fun things to get into. Uh, enjoy your crafting and I'll see you next week. Bye for now.